Hercules, you're here at last. I have traveled many galaxies to save your planet from these Clargon warriors. Hercules, what are we to do? We are but not against these strange invaders. It's very difficult to break a name in birding. It's very hard. There's, there's so many bird watchers out there. To find a good bird is really hard. And obviously, a lot of people strive to do just that. They, they want their name in lights. Well, I, I often feel I, I'm a sort of amateur psychologist dealing with this work because you see all sorts of human emotions and among them are envy, greed, ambition. I'm afraid you can't trust people for various reasons. And I know for a fact, having spoke, spoke to people on the Rarities Committee, they, there are certain observers they know not to trust. How much of it do you think you managed to detect? Uh, well, I don't think there's much. I don't, not, not many people get by me, I'll tell you that. Because I've had a career of studying it, you know, I've studied the psychology of birders. I know exactly what makes these people tick. I know how they operate. There's a growing proportion, or growing percentage of people that that phone in birds that they say they've seen and you get someone to check it out within an hour or less and there's nothing to be found and a pattern emerges with some of these characters um, it doesn't happen just at once it, it starts happening regularly you know you get the same guy calling in a bird which miraculously disappears five minutes later um, and and you start to watch them you know, the attention is, uh, you know, all, all eyes are on this character. And you study his psychology and you study what he's up to. And, and you look into every claim of his. And it very quickly emerges what's going on. Um, these people are actively falsifying records. Unfortunately, it's my job to, to have to tell these clients, you know. I have to take them to one side and discuss it with them and sort of, hopefully direct them in a in the right direction in total it is estimated that two million people in the uk are bird watchers hundreds of the top bird watchers are monitored by lee evans who himself has written many books on rare birds working from home he single-handedly runs the uk 400 club which is a list of bird watchers ranked precisely according to how many species of rare bird they have seen. What generally happens, well, I, I, I make a mental note each bird I go to, who's present, who's seen what, who's recorded what, who's there and who isn't. Um, obviously on the day that I go for these birds. But then, uh, on other days, people just send me their submission, you know, that, that, that addition of, to their list. And what happens? Do you then have to check that submission? Yeah, each record has to be ratified. Um, each submission I get, I carefully go through it. Richard Bonser, number 491 on the list, is one of those whose claims Lee assesses. I mean, I'm 19 years old and I've seen 464 species in Britain, and that's quite some going. Lee um, sort of uses his knowledge of the um, birding fraternity um, to develop an understanding of is this bird reliable, um, have they seen this species before. He vets every single list which comes to him. If there are problems, he will address that situation. Um, but yeah, definitely, Lee does try and keep this um, sort of stringing out of birding, especially sort of people who have seen over 400 species.
occasionally you do see your name drop out of the list um, and one presumes that that's due to um, irregularities within their list. All I'm interested in is that we all play by the same rules. And are you the final judge on your list? Yeah, I, I'm judge and jury of, of what gets counted and what doesn't. Lee also takes part in the competitions himself and for the last 12 years he has seen more birds each year than anyone else in the United Kingdom. Last year I got 370. That was all out challenge last year. It was real hard work. I managed to get 370. But it is really hard. However, this year it looks as though he might not win. He is currently second to a young bird watcher called Adrian Webb. Uh, this year, as you know, I'm really being pushed to the, to the bone as such. I've got this young Adrian Webb who's being supported by his parents um, to, to really make a serious challenge on my year list. He's taken a whole year off work and he's really going for it. He's out virtually every day. Uh, money is no, no barrier. Distance is no barrier. And as soon as a bird comes up on the pager, he's off, wherever it is. Financially, it is a bit of a strain. Every bird that's turned up, I've um, jumped in my car or jumped on a plane or on a boat and I've gone for it, yeah. In the last 10 days, I've travelled 2,500 miles in my car. To see how many birds? Two. And is that worth it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, yeah. Um, the Red Next Stint wasn't just a year ticket, it was um, actually a lifer, which is, I've never seen one in Britain before. So to get that was really chuffed. Yeah, excellent bird. Now, as we speak, he's six birds ahead of me. He's, he's on 327, I believe, at the moment, uh, and I'm on 321. So he's certainly doing very well. How experienced are you two in the scheme of things? Mm, I don't regard not experience, not experienced, I'm not. I mean, we've done quite a lot of bird watching, we've seen a lot of birds between us. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I rate myself okay. I wouldn't say I'm brilliant, I mean, I'm no expert or anything, but. But so, how much kind of work has it taken to get to where you are now? Well, I've been bird watching for 17 years. Adrian has taken a boat out into the channel to look for a bird called a Wilson's Petrel. If he finds it, it will be one more bird that Lee has not seen this year and it will extend his lead even further. Do you think you might win this year? Um, well, I can't expect to win every year, and certainly if someone puts up a challenge like uh, Adrian, the fact is he, he has no job, he, he doesn't have to worry about working, he's got enough money to last him for the year. Um, the prospects of me beating him are, are very low, I would have thought, <laughs> as I've got various things to, to do. <laughs> um, so uh, I expect him to beat me this year if he continues at the, at the same rate of, that, he's, that he has been doing so. There you go. How pressured is it for people? Oh, burning's incredibly stressful. Remarkably stressful, certainly at my level. You know, the pressure is always on. Tony Marr is head of the British Ornithologists Union Records Committee, a committee of 10 scientists and experts. Unlike Lee, the committee does not produce rankings of bird watchers, but it too scrutinises claims of rare birds. Well, the, the file I've got here is, is the black woodpecker. It's uh, a species which has been claimed many times, and they go back to before 1684. And it's a bird a lot of birds People have like claimed to have seen black woodpeckers see in this country well, since the 17th century, but the committee has looked into every single one of those claims and rejected them all. There are incentives to people to push records very hard, the normal one being uh, human nature. There are people who go to great lengths to try and uh, see birds which others haven't seen. And you do find when reading some of the descriptions the way in which people can be seduced perhaps into seeing something they haven't really seen. We're not honest all the time. You just can't help it. I don't think there's a bird watcher alive who hasn't, in inverted commas, strung something, which means they've seen something, they thought, was that the rare bird? 
and in their heart of hearts they know either it wasn't or they know they couldn't really prove it but two days later they've convinced themselves it was <laughs> you know and suddenly they oh I, maybe I did see that you know and, uh, and they look it up in the books and think oh yeah I did see that didn't I you know everybody's done it everybody's done it you know you lie to yourself to a certain extent the difference then becomes do you publish those lines do you actually put that record into the rarities committee and see it published there was a, a rare thrush um, submitted with photographs once and there's just a the feel that something was really wrong about this and then somebody did an analysis of the photographs and they found that the thrush had exactly the same uh, position of the tail to body to wings no matter what it was doing so when it was sort of bending down to pick food up from the floor the, the tail was stuck up in exactly the same angle as it was when it was uh, apparently standing flat on a lawn and it was obvious once once you'd actually made that breakthrough it was obvious that this was a papier-mâché um, model of this rare thrush that somebody had put in their garden photographed it from different angles and submitted it. However, many false claims are more difficult to prove. Most of the time, a judgment of a claim boils down to a judgment of character. And if a red-throated pivot flew over here and it called now, I know what it was. I know the call. And I said, that's a red-throated pivot. I said, how the hell can I prove that? Which always gives the lie to me that rarities committees say they don't bring personalities into it. Because they have to. If you get a red-throated pivot, record, if I may say so from me, they know I know what it sounds like, if they know me, and they say, yeah, well, he's probably right, but if somebody they don't know, they don't know whether he knows what that call is or not, you know, and somebody they do know who's particularly dodgy, they say, no, he's just made it up, it wasn't a bloody tree pit, it flew over, something like that. They must bring personality into it to a point. We do have observers who only seem to find the incredibly rare birds, and they don't find, you know, the general run-of-the-mill rarities that many bird watchers who are out in the field will find regularly so if you're out in the field bird watching in, in eastern Britain eventually you're likely to find a, a rustic bunting or a rad's warbler or an olive back pipit or something like that you don't not find those and find the incredibly rare birds regularly so the way you detect it isn't so much necessarily from the individual record you no. detect it from a pattern kind of, of behaviour yeah. mm. There has been a report of a red-footed falcon in Cambridge, and Lee has come to see it for himself. The bird is quite far away, which is often the case. At first, it's not easy to spot. It's very hard to see, though. It's hard to see the bird. Yeah, very hard to see. Yeah. I can see a little pale light. It's difficult to make out. You don't know it's there. That's right. It is there, in that tree. <laughs> It's the right hand of the this sighting turns out to be correct, but watching birds from such long distances can have unfortunate consequences. Some poor souls were, were sort of um, watching a dead bird, because yeah, this, this bird didn't move for about seven hours, uh, and it was actually dead. <laughs> They'd actually been watching it for, for many hours, and it, it was dead on the ground. <laughs> but um, <laughs> they still try and tick it, unfortunately. That, uh, they tried to claim it as a... Well, they, they tried to claim it, yeah, that they'd seen it, you know, alive. That they'd apparently seen it breathing. They'd seen it make the odd uh, pant. Back on the boat, a bird has been seen briefly that they think might be a Wilson's petrel, the bird they came out here to find. Did you have it here? I didn't have it really close. Did I you have it here though? Yeah, I didn't get the panel in the middle. Well, a lot of seabird records are very difficult to adjudicate. The bird flies past and it's gone. You don't get a second chance. And you have tricks of the light. You might have difficulties with the wind and the way it catches the bird. So the views are not going to be perfect. It's often a subjective assessment of what you're looking at. Spiders convinced. Oh yeah, definitely. Well I saw them I, but I mean they, to me the views are got the tickle views. You saw that? I mean I couldn't submit that to BBRC where I saw it. Well I could. What did you get on this? On the British Birds Rarities reporting form is a question, are you one hundred percent certain? And 
the answer needs to be yes. How confident are you? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm quite 100%. confident. 100%? Yeah, yeah, of course. Ashes yeah. as well. I saw it from behind, so we've got to... Yeah. Would you all have different like, spider more certain than you are? Well, Spider got a better view of it. I mean, I mean, he had it sort of cross over with a song petrol and had the size comparison as well, and he, he got it a lot closer. Um, so he can be more sure? Yeah, I, I think he's quite happy. I mean, Ash sitting next to me is convinced as well, but I mean, they know the birds on jizz. Um, and just by looking at them, they can say, yeah, it's one, I know it's not. So if they both know the bird is it, and you see it, can you count it? I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to. I mean, why not? I don't see why not. Really. Yeah, but I mean, they know it is it, but I mean, they couldn't give a written description and get this bird accepted. You know, it hasn't been seen that well. Although they although they know just on juice that it is one, I mean, I'll wait until we get one close. I, would, I wouldn't count a bird like that. Right. Although, although I'm quite sure myself, I wouldn't just wouldn't tick a bird like that. So, I mean, yeah, I've got... I've got morals, and, and, and the, the, the morals are, to me, I mean, I have, I, I have to be confident myself. What I've seen is is what it is. So, yeah, there will be more, hopefully. Because Adrian is doing so well this year, Lee has been keeping a particularly close eye on him. Um, I, I generally know where he is anyway. I, I know his whereabouts. I know what he's seen. People phone me when they've seen him. So, yeah, I know what he's up to. I know knows every move or such. I met him um, a couple of months ago at, at a Twitch and um, I was talking to him and he said uh, he accepts that I probably might beat him this year as, as, as the year goes. I will see more species in this year. But he's hoping that I don't see more than 378 species, which is his all-time record. He said to me, I'll, I'll be most unhappy if you beat that. And how's it looking at the moment? Does it look like you might be able to beat his record? At the moment, it's looking very good, yeah. I'm on uh, 332 at the moment, which is a very high figure for this time of year. You talk to Asia, where he's seen everything, because he goes as soon as the bird breaks. Most people can't just jump in the car and go. They've got families, they've got commitments, they've got a job. They just can't do it. There's very, very few people that can do that, very few. Yeah, the more money you've got, the more birds you'll get. But some people have got more money than others, so it's not an equal playing field. So what do the people with less money do? Well, grizzle, don't they? <laughs> they don't get half the birds. Another possible Wilson's petrel has been seen. This time it stays long enough to be watched clearly by everyone on the boat. Why do you think birds do attract more interest than, say, insects or, say, uh, other species of animals? Well, birds overall are, to someone like myself, the most beautiful things in the world. And they do have an enormous appeal, not just from their beauty, but because of their lifestyles. They fly, which I think is one of the greatest things that we all admire, and uh, many of us would be happy to emulate them. And uh, their appeal is universal. Birds are everywhere. There is hardly a place in the world which doesn't have birds. Having seen the bird they came out here to find, there is a sense of relief on the boat. But for Adrian, a serious problem is developing. Possibly one bird that could be disputed on his, on, on his yearless tradition. Which one is that? Well, it's just a possibility he didn't see a bird called an ivory gull up on the, the Hebrides. But, you know, I'm still checking that out, still, still under investigation. But that, that's the only bird. What, that it wasn't an ivory gull? Or that oh, no, certainly that no question about it being an ivory gull. The big question is if Adrian saw the bird on, on the day he says he saw it, uh, because the next morning it was nearly 100 miles away. In January, I went up to see um, an ivory gull in the Isle of Lewis, which is uh, the Outer Hebrides. So I drove up to Scotland, missed the first ferry across, so I had to go on the next day, um, got across, got a taxi driver to drive me down to the site, and, and the bird was there. Well, actually, the bird wasn't at the site it had been at. 
um, the taxi driver recommended because he knew the island because he was a tour leader that we look on another um, fish farm. And we went over to fish farm and they'd look and the bird was flying around. So I was, I was chuffed to pieces. The ivory gull that he went for had been feeding all week on a dead shag, um, you know, at the edge of a pool. And it had been living there, basically. It was just harbouring, guarding this kill. Or the, well, it wasn't a kill, it was, a, it was scavenging this dead shag. And obviously, as soon as it had finished with it, it moved on. And the day Adrian went for it, it wasn't there, you know, it wasn't on that kill. So somehow he miraculously managed to see it when none of the locals could find it, which was, you know, a bit interesting. This is the bird, which is a, quite a pure white gull um, with a black face, uh, the black bands of the tail and, and the, the black markings on the wings. It had been there for about four or five days and I was actually the last person to see it. It was never seen again on that island after I'd seen it. But it was there? But it was definitely there, yeah. So you can be 100% confident? Oh, I'm 100 I'm, I'm a thousand percent sure I know it was an ivory gull. But I mean, for your sake, aren't, don't, you want, don't you want him to believe you? Don't you want to get it sorted out? I definitely want him to believe me, and I think, I think deep down he, he realises I probably have seen it. Maybe he wants to believe I haven't because he never got to see it himself, because he likes to see the species himself. Um, but yeah, I think at the end of the year, when I submit my records to him, I think he'd be quite happy. But you're going to count it? Well, I don't know yet. It depends. I still, you know, still don't know what I'm going to do about it. But so what happens if you have your suspicions? Is there anything you can do to verify them? Um, well, because Adrian went on his own, and there's only two local observers, and it was a weekday, it's, you know, it's very difficult to, to sort of say yes or no, really. At the end of the day, you just have to hope that the integrity of you know, Adrian's integrity is, is uh... Have you ever been caught stringing a bird before? I won't string a bird. Um, it's possible that I've made mistakes and identified a bird wrong, but I won't intentionally string a bird. I won't say I've seen something I haven't. Um, I mean, yeah, every bird watch has made mistakes. Every bird watch has looked at a bird and said it's something else and made a mistake. But I mean, usually these are common species. Um, usually common species. For anything that I've seen this year, I've made sure myself that I'm confident, I'm happy that what I've seen is what I've seen. Because at the end of the year, I don't want to cheat myself. I don't want to, don't want to see 399 species and believe that I've seen 400 and tell everyone I've seen 400. I, I want to genuinely try and see 400 species. Mistake? Do you think that's possible? Who, me, myself? What, no, me, in terms me. of, do you ever t tell someone uh, you strung a bird when they didn't string a bird? Or you think uh, they strung a bird? Yeah, there's been the odd occasion when I've not believed a record and it's turned out to be genuine. Oh, there'll always be a case of that. You know, these people will always strike lucky once in their lives. You know, at some stage, someone might claim I don't know, 40 birds, but Sod's law has it that one of those birds will actually be real. So there's always that possibility, you know. How will you feel if you don't manage to beat his record? It won't bother me that much. I've had a great time. I've had a great time. I've met loads of new friends in Berlin and seen loads of lovely birds. So, I mean, yeah, obviously I'd like to try and beat this, this all-time record, but I don't do it, I don't do it. Maybe I'll try another year. Stay with four. We're joining the word detectives next for countdown. <laughs>